What's up guys, Ben here bringing another video. As promised, we're doing a Q&A today. So I'm gonna run through some questions that I got on Twitter from viewers and providing some answers. So let's dive in on those. All right, first up, question from J. Rich the King. Do you think Thieves will have a championship hangover? Will it be to the extent of Phases last season? Uh, and that was with RCs getting dropped at the end of the season. Do I think that Thieves is likely to repeat as the champion this season? I think would say that odds and historical kind of factors in Call of Duty would say no. Do I think they're going to be a good team throughout the year. Yes, I think they've got the tools to do so. Do I think they'll have a roster change at the end of the season? I think that also remains to be seen. Obviously, we've seen most years, you know, 10 to 9 teams are really making a change every season. So, you know, the odds would say it's hypothetical. I do kind of like the tools that Thieves have right now. The biggest thing for them is continuing the level of S&D play they had at the end of last season. They were really good at respawn, and don't get me wrong. But I think what really cemented them as a top team was how good they got at search at the end of the season. So if they bring that team fire again in that game mode, I think they're going to be there or thereabouts. If they fall off a little bit, I think we'll have some interesting questions to answer about the team. The next question is from Toxics, and he asked, with what we are hearing, that phase has been struggling in scrims, losing their last nine hard points. How do you think the team is meshing compared to the old phase roster? I also got another similar question from Trey. Are you concerned about phase scrim performance? They seem like they lose a lot of them in close fashion. Or do you feel like they're focused on other aspects like breaking and holding so we shouldn't read too much in the results? All right. I had a feeling I was going to get this question. You could really substitute any team other than FaZe for this. I'm really going to only talk about this once. Look, I think a lot of people are basing this off of the CDL Scrim Intel account. And when they play like a Boston or a Vegas, they're the only two teams at the moment that are streaming their scrims every day. So you're really only seeing like 15 to 20%, if even of these teams playing. So in the FaZe example, right? I had people come into my chat the last couple of days, say FaZe is struggling. I said, are they? I hit up phase. I said, yo, what's going on? I talked to the coaches and they said, well, everybody saw the one scrim where we were losing close maps. And that day we only lost a couple of hard points. So I think everybody needs to hold caution on the fact that you're only seeing a portion of everybody's gameplay outside again of Boston and Vegas who are streaming everything that they are doing. For phase though, just to kind of address the sort of breaking holding thing. In the past, they've been a team that isn't always an early rotator team. And they made an effective game plan at times of being a team that gets a 40, 20 on hills, but they end end up getting the back end 40 and not the front end 20. And it can work in some games. I do think this year they will want to make sure they're a good holding team. To that point though, at times last year in Vanguard, they actually flipped that paradigm quite a bit. So I'm not really worried about phase. I think in general for me, if we're talking about that roster change, I actually think that Austin brings in a little bit better sort of search and destroy pedigree uh, and situational awareness than Alec does. And I think that's where phase ultimately struggled. It wasn't really the respawn uh, necessarily. They kind of weren't a strong S&D team at the end of the season. And I think if Austin really brings their SD back to dominance in the way that we saw in Modern Warfare in Cold War. I think they're going to be really, really like celebrating a few chips this season if they do it right. All right. Next question is from Jake, aka Dangled Sniper on Twitter. How much of a do or die is this season for Prisa, especially for his team to look good early? I feel he has always been an underrated player, even when he hasn't performed well at all. Hoping all the best from him with a goat emoji. So Jake, let's talk about Preston. I think there's like sort of two things going on there. One is I don't think the Minnesota situation was particularly good for him. I've talked time and time again on videos on this channel, on my stream about how I felt like he was being set up for failure on that team because he was sort of playing by the book and a lot of other players in that system were just kind of going rogue or they were kind of off pace. And so he was left to kind of fill gaps kind of against the world three, four guys at a time. I think also though on the other side of that, we haven't seen the best of Preston performances individually sometimes. He's losing once. I think he's good enough to win. And at times watching him play, I feel like sometimes he sort of almost forces himself out of good positions to try and really like kind of move around too much. I think just not, you know, letting the game come to him a bit. So I think to answer your question, I do think this is an important season for Preston. I do think like for his stock, if he were to say get bench for Wardy at some point this season, it's going to be really tough for him to get back on another championship contender. I do think this New York team is kind of a sleeper team this year. I think again, as we talked about with Thieves, I think with this game being a AR kind of heavy meta right now and again we'll see with sort of GAs or whatever if that changes it really kind of suits this uh play style this New York team well um so I think a lot of people might be sleeping on them this year and I do think that Preston uh, at least from what I've seen in scrims uh, that have been streamed again small percentage so keep that in mind he has looked pretty good so I do think there's an opportunity for him to increase his stock but again as we've seen in the past with New York it's always a cluster F sometimes internally and hopefully they've kind of cleaned up their culture there so they can kick it on from here all right next question is from T. 
Ames or TMs. Not sure how to pronounce your name, brother. How has the switch from your previous job to going to full content been? Would you would love to hear your thoughts on your mental and just your own thoughts on switch? So uh it's definitely been like you know different for me because you know, I was waking up every day, having to check my email, go through action items. You know, my previous job was a lot of sort of business development, winning deals, and getting deals papered. Uh, and then on the other side of that, you know, executing the programs that we were working on. So that was a, a lot of sort of really making sure I was on top of things every day. With content now, I, what I think now I'm more focused on is making sure I structure my day more where I can really be at my best when my stream is live and feel like I can give most energy. Managing my energy back when I was doing my other job was very much just how much caffeine I could consume. And now I'm just trying to be more cognizant of my health and like making sure I can kind of be the best self I can put forward every single day. So it's a little bit of a different challenge, but I, I've kind of enjoyed the decision. I like what I'm doing now. And I'll give you guys more updates on it as I kind of go on this journey of being a full-time content creator. Next up, we got a question from Jacko. Opinions on Las Vegas Legion. Is it a situation where they are ahead of the crowd or have they got the potential to be a top six roster? So I think everybody is kind of really on the Las Vegas Legion kind of bandwagon right now. And I don't blame them because this franchise has struggled for really almost the entire length of the CDL. I think two things are going on. One is I do think they are a little bit ahead of the pack. They have played more than a lot of other teams in the game and especially in Hardpoint. You know, they're a little bit more organized right now in terms of what they want to do. I will say my kind of second thing with Vegas for me, and this is more of a floor thing, is that uh, again, AR heavy meta. So we're seeing a lot of 40 bombs from Clay and Don. I'm not yet convinced that the sub duo is good enough for them to really be an upper echelon team. So when we say, you know, are they a top six roster or the potential to be? I think they can, but you know, I see this as sort of like a Boston situation last year. I think Vegas has an opportunity to move from being sort of a team that everybody's going to beat, just hold L's throughout the season to being like a really serviceable squad that can maybe stand in front of a lot of teams in sort of the middle of the pack and make champs. But do I think that they currently have the talent on their roster to, you know, beat a phase or an optic? I'm not really sure if they're going to be able to pull that off. I'd love to see it because it would be a great story of seeing, especially Don and Clay kind of be on a real contender this year. But I think the jury uh, is a little bit out on sort of their long-term prospects. I will say kind of watching their scrims and my concern about, you know, sort of the mentals and sort of the chemistry. As much as you get those, you know, passive aggr aggressive comments from Clay and Don at times, and that's sort of their sort of how they conduct themselves as a teammate. It does seem like where they're at right now as a team, they're able to work through a lot of their issues when you hear it in between maps. So I think they're making a lot of progress as a squad. It's very positive. Really want to see them moving forward with that. And I'm kind of excited to see if they can keep this going uh, for a major one because we're better off if all 12 teams are very competitive in this league. Next up, we got a question from Fighter NP. Thoughts on the Sledgehammer DLC for MW2 releasing next year. So apparently, like from what I've seen on Twitter and a bunch of other stuff, that Sledgehammer is doing a lot of support stuff now and not necessarily working on another game. Look, for me, we don't want to be like Halo. The new Halo game came out last year to a lot of fanfare, and then they didn't really like support it with any good content. Even though like within the last week, they just released their winter update with Forge Mode. The population's already sunk and Warzone 2 is coming out. So they, they've kind of missed a boat on that. For Call of Duty and it's specific to Modern Warfare 2. The key here is with all these seasons, the beginning and the mid-season update, they need to continue pumping out new content, new maps, new guns. If you're keeping things fresh, bringing in new stuff, listening to feedback, you're going to have happy players. You're going to have fresh content. You're going to want to keep playing your game. So it's a positive development. Let's see what they do. Let's see what the release structure looks like. It's all good news on that front for us looking to keep the game fresh and exciting next up we got sam 16 i like the roman numerals in your name brother that's kind of cool why do the cdl or i guess you want to phrase that why does the cdl not do interviews with the losing team like in football sucks to lose but would be interesting to hear post-match what they think went wrong i think there's a good niche to it plus how many Mourinho bangers have come out of them so he's referring to famous football manager or soccer manager jose Mourinho, uh who is definitely someone when you watch his pre-game or post-game interviews give some interesting quotes i think there's probably like two things here one is we play a lot of online activity Activity. And I don't think the CDL has been uh, really strong about, you know, enforcing like a media availability to all teams uh, after they play in traditional sports. Like this is a given, right? Either you, you go to a press conference or especially in the soccer football world, they just kind of walk through what they call a mix zone where there are beat reporters and reporters there as a player or a coach. And then you can kind of walk up to each person, answer questions, yada, yada. Also at kind of events, I think the bigger issue as to why you don't see a lot of press conferences is just a space issue. Some of these venues aren't particularly big. There's not a really good spot for the 
venue host the league to kind of set up a press conference area so you can kind of do it maybe do it remote uh, i just don't think it's really a priority on their side and candidly if i were a losing team like i don't want to talk to the press so there's no historical precedent to do it maybe it's a good idea but i don't see the momentum right now uh on the team side to want to actually fulfill on those and what mechanism is there for the cdl to like find people if they don't show up for interviews all right last question from Branium devon aka dev why are there more than five hard points on some maps and why do you think there isn't a red dot option for custom cdl matches and then you know he asked like why isn't anyone from activision you know they made a change okay so there's a couple things here so on the five hard points front like i've said on stream that i think there's a little bit of a b testing going on in some of these maps i think like they put out a map like mercado with a lot of hills and then the expectation of thought process on their side is it's a long your release let's figure out what hills work and then kind of in our first major patch we'll make some changes that's okay like you know i think it's hard to play test these things obviously would you know if you get your pros in beforehand maybe they can help you with this but if you're not going to do that and you want to go down the you know release and then fix strategy a lot of AAA titles are doing that as for the red dot thing i don't quite understand the decision to be honest i know they put out their rationale kind of during sort of the beta of this game but it didn't really make a lot of sense to me i think like especially at the pro level it's causing a lot of issues with communication and just sort of like figuring out where to aim and to get trades like it, there's a lot of knock on things with this decision i would really like to see them bring the red dot option back i think it'd be beneficial to the more hardcore fan base as for why no one stepped up look i'm gonna say this time and time again on this channel until it gets done my biggest gripe with the process right now on how we talk about competitive operation topic is there's sort of two tracks there's the player talking to the league kind of player relations side where they do it through dm groups and occasional league meetings then the owner side obviously they have their owners meeting and i think that deals less on competitive topics and more on just sort of league business league structure and i do think to kind of merge those two kind of work streams there really needs to be a formal committee to actually talk about this stuff talk with developers everybody come to decisions figure out temporary restrictions or gas or what you want to call them i think right now it's just sort of a weirder kind of disjointed process and i think everybody needs to have a venue where these things can be discussed on an official level and people can be happy at the compromise that gets done there so I'm going to keep harping on that until this gets done. Uh, I've been banging this drum, I think, since like the World War II year. Because I think this this whole DM thing is kind of dumb. So I'd like to see that change, to be honest, from my perspective. All right, well, that's it on the questions, guys. I appreciate everybody that sent over yours for the video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of some of the answers, if you agree or disagree with me. Uh, as always, like uh, if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more content, guys. Uh, really excited this weekend. We have the Challengers Cup coming up. So uh, our video tomorrow will be uh, covering sort of the uh, preview of the tournament teams. I think they're going to be doing good, maybe struggle, maybe some upsets, etc. cetera. And then over the weekend, we might be doing some shorts content for you guys, kind of summering some of the matches as they happen. So be on the lookout for that. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next video.